Support for this podcast and the following message come from the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. Did you know that Michigan is one of America's top 10 states for business? Put your company on the rise. Go to michiganbusiness.org to learn more. Are you looking for the perfect gift for the nerdy pop culture fan in your life? How about an Ask Me Another ticket pack? Ten tickets good for any Bell House show through the end of 2017. More information at amatickets.org. And while you're holiday shopping, why not swing over to the NPR shop as well? Featuring an array of gifts for the public radio moms, dads, teens, and tots on your list. Get nerdy this holiday season at shop.mpr.org. PR.org. From NPR and WNYC, coming to you from the Bell House in beautiful Brooklyn, New York, it's NPR's hour of puzzles, word games, and trivia. Ask me another. I'm Jonathan Colton. Now here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. We've got a great show for you. Our special guest is Project Runway's fashion guru, Tim Gunn, and he's here just in time for the launch of our Ask Me Another fashion label called Make It Word Play. We've got reversible jackets in our palindrome collection. We've got skorts in our portmanteau line. And you'll love our onomatopoeia collection with flip-flops that, well, (laughs) flip-flop. Next season, we're going to introduce our social justice scarves, We Shall Overcome, (laughs) and our shoe collection for millennials, social media platforms. (laughs) And as always, we have four brilliant contestants currently pinning magazine photos on their vision boards, waiting to play our nerdy games, but only one will become our big winner. Let's meet our first two contestants who will face off in a wild word game about animals. First up is Katie Brookoff, and you're on buzzer number one. Hey. Hi, welcome. Thanks. You're a children's birthday party entertainer at the Manhattan Children's Museum. And your opponent is Kira Abrams, and you're on buzzer number two. You're a junior at Ramapo College in New Jersey, interested in cognitive neuroscience. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> Kira and Katie, the first of you who wins two of our games will move on to the final round at the end of the show. So let's go to your first game. Kira, if you could combine two animals, which two would you combine? Uh, I'm thinking like an elephant and a whale. Mm. <laughs> Third. <laughs> wow, what? You've highly amused Jonathan Colton. What are you, what are you shooting for there, Kira? <laughs> Well, they're my two favorite animals. Uh, I'm actually kind of confused if it would be on land or sea, but I think they found out what the biggest animal on land could be, and it's smaller than a whale. So it might just be like a giant underwater mammal with a trunk, and I have no idea what you'd use it for. (laughs) Katie, if you could combine two animals, which two would you combine? Um, I would combine a hippo and an octopus. Okay, you guys are like kind of in the same world here. Yeah. And why is that? Octopi, octopuses have the power of camouflage, so you don't see them at first. So I like the idea of walking by like a wall, and then all of a sudden it turns into a hippo. (laughs) (laughs) So we are going to start with a word game called Noah's Lark. In this game, you're going to take a common name, title, or phrase, add one letter to it, turning one of the original words into an animal. Okay. For an example... Jonathan Colton will help us out. So if I said this device creates an atmospheric haze during concerts and laser shows, and it has a setting that covers the stage with amphibians, you would answer frog machine, adding one letter to fog machine. So here we go. If you're having problems with your Mac or iPhone, you can take it to this section of the Apple store, which is staffed entirely by grizzlies in hipster glasses. Kira. Genius bears? Genius Bear is correct. Yes, absolutely. On this TV show, people enter a taxi and are surprised to learn that they are contestants on a game show where they will win money if they can avoid being pinched by a crustacean. Katie. Cash crab. That's right. Mm, Yeah. Pretty sure you can catch 
crabs from a New York taxi. <laughs> I'm just saying, this is, this is not a game show. It happens. <laughs> it happens. All right, let's try this one. Remember this video game fad from the 2000s? I still have a plastic musical instrument and a plastic long-legged wading bird in my closet. Katie. Guitar heron. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Just learn how to play a real heron, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what, though? It does a pretty good job of approximating what it's like to play a, an actual heron. That's the thing about right. the game. Watch out, because this trap queen rapper is a stinging insect that lives in a nest. Kira. Fetty wasp. That is correct. Yeah. Neil Patrick Harris, Tay Diggs, and John Karen Mitchell have each starred as the title character in this musical about a rock star who gets an operation to turn into the songbird Darwin studied. Katie. Hedwig and the Horrible Finch. No! All right, all right. We'll, we'll all give right. her a chance to correct Can that. Can you correct yourself? Hedwig and a type of finch. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> yes! You need to be more uh, specific, I'm afraid. It had a one inch beak. Kira, <laughs> can you steal? Uh, but it was finches. That was not the problem in her answer. <laughs> I've never seen this musical. <laughs> But you're not sure because you don't know it. We were looking for Hedwig and the Angry Finch. Oh. So close! Next time you're in Vegas, avoid pulling the handle on this game. It moves very, very slowly. Kira. Sloth machine. You got it. Puzzle guru Art Chung, how did our contestants do with this very difficult game? It was a difficult game indeed. Congratulations, Kira. You're one step closer to the final round. Coming up, it's our favorite guessing game, This, That, or The Other. But first, let's check in with our contestants. Kira, you recently got your dual citizenship in Romania granted. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. And then you had some uh, good luck gambling over there? Well, it was when I was still 20, so like a few months ago. So uh, it was... <laughs> And uh, I was really excited to, like, legally be allowed to do that. And I was surrounded by, like, drunk old men. My mom was with me. She wasn't interested in this at all. So it was just, like, this weird, young, only girl and only young person at this table. That's pretty much the story. And I just, how much did you win? Uh, like, 400 lei. Which is? Like, $50. Oh, yeah, that's, that's great. That's nice. I like that. Katie, if I said to you, I'm going to move to L.A. and I'm going to get an apartment uh, by looking at some Craigslist posts, what would you say to that? I would say that would be a big mistake. <laughs> I ended up living with one of the founding members of Guar. That sounds kind of awesome. Yeah, that sounds fine. What was wrong with that? It was great. It was like living in a medieval foam sex dungeon. <laughs> Guar, of course, being a heavy metal band that wears crazy costumes. Correct. And But he was no longer in Guar. But his costumes were in my apartment. <laughs> so he was still in the Guar state of mind? Yes, it's, you can't leave it once you enter. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Well, in honor of today's special guest, Project Runway's Tim Gunn, we're playing a special edition of This, That, or The Other. I'm going to give you a person's name, and you have to tell me if that person is a famous fashion designer, a professional golfer, or a James Bond villain. We have found intersection between these three things. Harder, harder than you would think. <laughs> now we're going to alternate back and forth, so no need to buzz in. Kiri, you won the last game, so you win this, and you're going right to the final round. Katie, you need to win this, or I'm going to kiss you on the cheek and say, Avita Sain. <laughs> we'll start with you, Katie. Francisco Scaramanga. A Bond villain? Bond villain, yes, exactly. <laughs> From the man with the golden gun. All right, Kira. Electra King. Bond? Bond villain is correct. Yeah, you guys are nailing this. Katie. Irina Vitage. A fashion designer? Totally a fashion designer, yeah. I actually went to her Facebook page, and she has the best-looking friends. <laughs> All of her friends have, like, cool glasses and a weird haircut. Like, and we have no mutual friends. So. 
Akira, Lydia Ko. Uh, Lydia, uh, I think it's a golfer. That is a golfer, yeah. <laughs> Ranked number one women's golfer. She's currently 19 years old, and on her 17th birthday, she was named one of Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People. At 17. At 17, I woke up with two golf balls in my mouth. <laughs> uh, man, I would like to hear the rest of that story. Katie, Kim Ellery. And it's Kim with a Y, by the way. K-Y-M oh. Ellery, just to be clear. The Y makes me think it's a fashion person. It is a fashion person, Yeah. Kira Angela Stanford. Fashion designer? Andrea Stanford is not a fashion designer. Can you steal Katie? Do you think it's a pro golfer or a Bond villain? I want to imagine it's a very smart Bond villain yeah. that went to Stanford. <laughs> and just, I just took, took the, the name. name. Yeah. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. But I won't say Oh, yeah, that. that's your answer? <laughs> All right. That's, that's your answer. Sorry. I didn't realize your musing was your answer. Uh, that's incorrect. Yeah. <laughs> All right. These are your last clues. Katie, Hugo Drax. Going to say a Bond villain? Yeah, Bond villain. Yeah, right. And Kira, Brandon Maxwell. Uh, fashion person. Yes, he's a fashion designer. Yeah. All right, Puzzle Guru, Archung, how did our contestants do? They both did great, and congratulations. Katie, you've tied it up by winning that round. So now it's time for a quick game three. I'm going to give you a category, and you'll go back and forth naming things in that category. The first contestant to mess up by giving a wrong answer, repeating an answer, or taking too long is going to be eliminated. You're going to have to buzz in to answer first. Here's your category. Name the gifts given in the carol, The Twelve Days of Christmas. Katie, you're first. A partridge and a pear tree. That is correct. Kira. Five golden rings. Five golden rings, correct. Um, two turtle doves. Katie is correct. Kira. I'm Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to give you three seconds. Carolers. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Kira. The other ones on the list were, in reverse order, 12 drummers drumming, 11 pipers piping, 10 lords a-leaping, 9 ladies dancing, 8 maids a-milking, 7 swans a-swimming, 6 geese a-laying, 4 calling birds, and 3 French hens. I'm sorry we have to say goodbye to Kira, but congratulations, Katie. You're moving on to the final round. Coming up, we'll find out who will face off against Katie in our final round at the end of the show. And we'll learn about some famous historical women who could easily beat you in a fight. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and you're listening to Ask Me Another from NPR. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your earbuds. Our sponsor, History Vault, wants you to know about the perfect gift for the history buffs this holiday season. You can stream hundreds of hours of videos exploring ancient Rome, presidential elections, military history, and everything in between. History Vault is the only place where you can watch History Channel content anytime you want, anywhere you are. There are no commercials and new videos are added every week. So visit historyvault.com slash askmeanother to give the gift of the History Channel today. The following message comes from smartphone maker OnePlus with their new OnePlus 3T, a higher standard of what you should come to expect from your smartphone. The 3T powers through emails, games, and more with its 2.3 gigahertz Qualcomm processor. Store all of your music, pictures, and files with up to 120 gigabytes of memory and get a full day's charge in as little as 30 minutes with exclusive dash charge technology. What's best, the OnePlus 3T won't lock you in with restrictive carrier cards contracts so get your hands on your own one plus 3t today at oneplus.net this is ask me another npr's hour of puzzles word games and trivia i'm jonathan colton here with puzzle guru art chung now here's your host ophira eisenberg thank you jonathan 
Before the break, our contestant Katie won her way to the final round at the end of the show. We'll find out a little later who she will face off against. But first, it's time for a segment we call Meet the Expert. And today's expert is the author of the book, Rejected Princesses, Tales of History's Boldest Heroines, Hellions, and Heretics. Please welcome Jason Poroff. Thank you. Hey, Jason. How's it going? It's going great. How are you doing? Very good. So, Jason, you worked as an animator at DreamWorks, which is where you had the idea for this blog that would eventually become the book. But tell me about the lunchtime conversation where the idea started. Yeah. When Frozen came out, uh, there were a ton of really terribly written articles that came out about it. And one was 12 reasons the Frozen girls are bad role models. And we're like, oh, if they're bad role models we can come up with way worse ones like what is the worst idea for a disney princess you can come up with and out of that conversation the worst one we came up with was uh, nabokov's lolita uh <laughs> it was such a terrible idea i just wanted it to exist in some form or another so i drew it uh but i also tossed out a bunch of historical figures that nobody had ever heard of uh, at the table at least and i'm like i want those to exist too so i started drawing it went viral and here we are and it's this beautiful looking book that looks like a children's fairy tale almost looks and it's beautifully like the drawings of all the well, princesses or are you know and it looks something like something you would want to read your kids yes but but <laughs> Uh, there's significantly more beheadings than your average kids' movie. So uh, I put in a lot of uh, content warnings like you'd get in a movie. And so can you read any of them to your children? Oh, yeah. I mean, the first 30% of it, 35, is like sort of PG, and then sort of goes towards PG-13. It's sort of on the order of uh, Greek mythology. So if you're down <laughs> with uh, uh, Zeus coming down in weird animal forms and getting freaky with uh, women, then, uh, you know, that's worse than what's in my book, I would say. <laughs> Well, we're going to hear more about these princesses because you are going to help me with an Ask Me Another Whee! Challenge. All right. So we have actually chosen a lucky member from our audience to be a contestant for this challenge. Let's welcome Rebecca Peterson. <laughs> hey, Rebecca. Hi. Hi. You're visiting from Atlanta, Georgia. I am. Well, nice to have you. Thank you. Uh, and let me see. What do we know about you? Oh, how about this? You bought a pet pig in college on a whim. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Her name is Angela. She has a bad attitude. <laughs> Your game is called Two Truths and a Lie, Rejected Princesses Edition. We're going to give you two true facts and one lie about a historical woman featured in Jason's book. And your job is to pick the lie. Here we go. Uh, Julie Lamontpin. Daubigny was born in France in 1670. What is not true about her? She disguised herself as a man to give dueling demonstrations, became an opera singer in Paris before she was 20. She was friends with Voltaire and is said to have inspired his book Candide. Or C, she had a female lover. When her lover was banished to a convent, she joined the convent, burned it down so they could run off together. Which one is not true? I'm going to say A, that first one. That she disguised herself as a man to give dueling demonstrations and became an opera singer in Paris before age of 20. Jason, what say you? Uh, sorry. <laughs> that that is actually did happen. Uh, and she did uh, burn down a convent to bang a nun. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't think she ever met with Voltaire. Uh, she was basically the closest I think humanity has ever produced to a real-life Bugs Bunny. Oh, uh, my gosh. <laughs> she's kind of amazing. Yeah, she sounds... Like a friend. All right, let's go to your next one. All right. Maria Akebrskaya was a tank driver born in 1905 in the Crimean Peninsula. She was the first woman to win the Hero of the Soviet Union Award for fighting in World War II. Tell us the lie. Is it A, she disguised herself as a man to join the Red Army? B, she used her own personal savings to buy the tank she drove? <laughs> or C, that her tank was called Fighting Girlfriend? Which was the lie? Um, I'm going to go with C. Fighting girlfriend. Jason. She's giving me the look. Sorry, you're incorrect. <laughs> uh, she never disguised herself as a man. Uh, when uh, she was a Soviet, when her husband was killed by the Nazis, she sold all their belongings, bought a tank, named the tank Fighting Girlfriend, and started killing Nazis. Oh my God. She needs her own movie. <laughs> all right. Your final question. All right. Katie Sanduina was a circus performer born in Austria in 1884. Which of these facts is not a fact? Okay. A, she met her future husband when she was 16 when she beat him in a wrestling contest. 
B, she could lift a horse. <laughs> or C, she retired from the circus and eventually became one of the first female U.S. congresswomen. I'm going to go with congresswoman. Jason. That's actually, you're correct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, Katie Sanduino was known as uh, the Lady Hercules. Uh, she did, in fact, uh, beat her husband. He uh, was like, oh, I can use a, a circus performer, an acrobat. She was 16 at the time, I think. And as he described it, the next thing that he remembered after entering the ring was just seeing the blue sky as she was carting him off <laughs> <laughs> on her shoulder. Uh, they later married. Uh, she was an active suffragette uh, or suffragist at the time. And, uh, yeah, she never ran for Congress, but uh, talked with rather a lot of them. She was a very well-known figure and uh, dispensed a lot of sort of motherly, like, new woman type tips to magazines as to uh, how to raise kids. And Rebecca, guess what? You did great. <laughs> Matter of fact, you won. <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> Congratulations. You've won a signed copy of Rejected Princesses. Everyone give it up one more time for our expert, Jason Cora. Coming up, Jonathan Colton will sing a music parody about famous families. So let's meet our next two contestants. First up, Rohan Pita Party is on buzzer number one. Rohan, you were a college senior at Harvard. Yep. You once awkwardly caressed Colin Powell's face. Yes. <laughs> it's quite literally my brush with greatness. Why was it awkward? Uh, so uh, I'm from Richmond, Virginia originally, and uh, when I was in high school, he gave a talk and I had my back turned to the door that he was coming out of, and I was like, what is taking so long? And that's, of course, when he decided to come out. So I didn't quite hit him, uh, but it was just sort of a gentle, like, kind of like, <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, it was one of those things, like, you know it both happened, it was really uncomfortable, like, we need to not talk about this right. and move on, you know? Very good. Your opponent is Bernard Burlew on buzzer number two. You are a Peanuts fanatic. And yes, by which I, I mean the comic strip by Charles <laughs> Schultz, not the legume. Uh, well, I, I grew up with it, and um, I have Snoopy tattooed on my back. Yeah. Snoopy is your character. That's who you relate to? I relate more to Linus. Do you? Uh, I identify as Linus. <laughs> Remember, Rohan and Bernard, the first of you who wins two of our games is going to move on to the final round at the end of the show. So let's go to your first game. Rohan, what is your favorite real or fictional family? Whew. Uh, though I am a fan of my own family, I think I would go with the Weasleys from Harry Potter. Good bunch. Yep. Bernard, what is your real favorite real or fictional family? Uh, the Gellers from Friends. Oh. Yeah. Because my sister and I are a lot like Ross and Monica. So. What particular quality? The constant competition. Who would you say is winning? Uh, my sister always wins. <laughs> Classic Linus. Yeah, very yeah. Linus. Classic yeah. Linus. <laughs> So your first game is a music parody game called We Are Families. Jonathan Colton, take it away. We rewrote the Sister Sledge song, We Are Family, to be about famous sledges. No, <laughs> not true. This game is actually about famous families, real and fictional. So buzz in to guess the family that I'm singing about. The winner will be one step closer to moving on to the final round at the end of the show. You ready? Yep. Yes. Okay. We are family With a bunch of sisters on E Love a good selfie K names for all the offspring Bernard The Kardashians That's exactly right I want to watch the other show about a bunch of sisters on E Yeah, I know <laughs> When I first read that, I was like, i got to check this show out. This sounds amazing. <laughs> Everyone can see they're together, although Fred does scream. There's a foot-powered car and pet dino on this bedrock team. Bernard. The Flintstones? Yes, that's correct. Showing off on their own MTV show Did they just act insane? Mom's on the talk now And Dad's keeping busy Driving the crazy train 
Bernard. The Osbournes. Yeah, that's right. We are family. These two famous brothers are key. Surnamed differently. Dad was POTUS on West Wing. Bernard. The Sheens. Yes, that's right. The Sheens. Music biz is tough and they've had it rough But Lucius says They'll stay on the road but Drama arrives Ex-wife Cookie Wants what she is owed Bernard The Lions Yes, that's right, the Lions from the show Empire <laughs> Seems like you got a lot more time for television <laughs> Since I'm you're not at Harvard <laughs> I'm getting crushed by the buzzer over here, man. <laughs> I'm a little embarrassed, I know, at least. Easy rider for bro, daughter and dad, in on Golden Pond. She led the 80s aerobics craze, was an activist too. Acting's a family bond. Bernard. <laughs> Giddy with power, he can't even... <laughs> The Fondas. The Fondas, that's right. I'm telling you, he's got quick hands on the buzzer. Look at those thumbs, Jesus. <laughs> Your thumbs are bigger than mine. They're long. You got power. You get in there. You know, <laughs> well, uh, this is your last clue, so. <laughs> Good luck, everybody. <laughs> we are family. We're pro athlete sisters, you see. Grand Slam rivalry. We both have a powerful swing. Rohan. Oh my God. You know, you know, you dream about certain moments for so long, <laughs> I don't know. and they finally come, and you don't, just, don't you blow it. Don't it. blow it. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna go with the Williams sisters. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> got one. Got one. Got to put numbers on the board, you know? <laughs> Art Chung, how did our contestants do? One did a little better than the other. Congratulations, Bernard. You're one step closer to the final round. There you go. Next up, we're going to anagram movie titles. So call your loved ones and tell them it's time to turn on the radio. Uh, Rohan, if your life was a movie, what would the title be? Uh, I mean, right now, Dazed and Confused. <laughs> okay. Where, uh... Bernard, if your life was a movie, what would the title be? Ah, Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you're winning. So was the Titanic for a while. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> this game is called Jumbled Plots. We've anagrammed the titles of recent movies and rewrote their plot descriptions based on the new titles. So your job is to figure out the original movie. Let's go to our puzzle guru, Art Chung, for an example. Chris Pratt runs around a theme park where genetic engineering produces a funky sea mammal in the film Disco Walrus Jr. <laughs> the answer we're looking for there is Jurassic World, which is an anagram of Disco Walrus Jr. <laughs> Buzz into answer. Bernard, you won the last game, so if you win this, you go to the final round. Rohan, you need to win this, or we'll say be dog yo to you, which is an anagram for goodbye. Ooh. All right, here we go. A contestant on a public radio quiz show buzzes in to answer a question, but forgets the answer because she's a fish with a bad memory in ding, dry info. Rohan. Finding Dory. That is correct. <laughs> On the brink of the 2008 financial meltdown, Steve Carell and Ryan Gosling renew their glaucoma treatment prescription in Got This Herb. <laughs> Rohan. What is the big short? It's also not Jeopardy, but yeah, the big short. <laughs> correct and then correct. <laughs> Hawkeye, Black Widow, and the gang have their hands full with a robot hurling tubers. In this sequel, flung a root as revenge. 
Rohan. Uh, what is the Avengers Age of Ultron? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, we'll take that. Yeah, yeah, There's we'll no take that. There's no love there, but we'll take that. Yeah, that's right. We'll take that. That is correct. Great. Tina Fey plays a journalist sent to investigate offshore tax shelters on the island of misfit toys in taxing the work of toys. <laughs> Rohan. Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> What's going on, guys? <laughs> Couldn't remember that movie. Yeah. You guys should team up. You'd be unstoppable. <laughs> we'll do the next one together. <laughs> Here's your next one. Quentin Tarantino directs this 2015 Western about an octet of pro athlete criminals who bond in a Wyoming cabin in athlete thief hug. <laughs> Rohan. What is <laughs> The Hateful Eight. That is correct. All right, this is your final question. The world's two greatest male models come out of retirement to donate their really, really, really ridiculously good-looking organs in Donor Zeal 2. Rohan. Zoolander 2. That is correct. Now, Rohan, I don't know if you know this last game. When we got to the final question, Bernard, knowing he was winning... Step back. <laughs> but you saw the opportunity to just... That's a Harvard man for you. Yeah. <laughs> Puzzle guru Archung, how did our contestants do? Well, Rohan tied it up. Congratulations. We're going to go to a tiebreaker. All right, I'm going to give you a category, and you're going to go back and forth naming things that fall in that category. You're going to buzz in to answer first. On a standard QWERTY keyboard, name the nine letter keys in the middle row. <laughs> Rohan, you're first. S. That is correct. Bernard. A. A is correct. Rohan. D. D is correct. Bernard. R. I'm sorry. <laughs> the other letters were F, G, H, J, K, and L. That means, Rohan, you're moving on to the final round. Congratulations. <laughs> It's settled. Our finalists are Katie and Rohan, and they will face off in our final round at the end of the show. And if you are mentally anagramming every word in this sentence as I speak it, go to amatickets.org to find out how to become a contestant and come see our show live. Come and be among your eel pop. <laughs> Coming up, it won't be the first time a catchphrase has become a game, but it might be the best time when we put Tim Gunn under the gun. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and you're listening to Ask Me Another from NPR. Support for this podcast and the following message comes from Thinks. Thinks period panties are a leak-resistant underwear that can replace tampons, pads, and cups on light days and be a backup to tampons and cups on heavy days. Thinks are reusable, machine washable, and are designed to be worn all day long with moisture wicking technology to keep you dry. Find a style to match your flow at shethinks.com and get $5 off with the code ANOTHER at checkout. That's Thinks, T-H-I-N-X. As the end of the year approaches, some of you have been asking about the best way to support Ask Me Another. Thank you so much for asking, and guess what? It's pretty simple. Just go to stations.mpr.org, find your local station, and make a year-end donation. Or better yet, become a regular monthly donor. And when you do, just say, Ask Me Another sent you. Find your local station at stations.mpr.org. It will take two minutes, and it's tax deductible. Again, that's stations.mpr.org. And thank you. This is NPR's Ask Me Another. I'm Jonathan Colton, here with puzzle guru Art Chung. Now here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. Thank you, Jonathan. So we'll find out which of our contestants, Katie or Rohan, will be today's big winner. But first, it's time to welcome our special guest. He's the mentor on the fashion reality show Project Runway and objectively 
one of the best human beings. Please welcome Tim Gunn. I have just have to tell everyone, I'm thrilled and excited and invigorated to be here, but I have performance anxiety. <laughs> it's true. And it's a metaphor for a lot of things, let me tell you. I'm so happy to meet you, so well, uh, thanks. Oh, Fear, I'm thrilled to meet you. I'm a huge fan. Huge fan. And of course, uh, you know, as we have to point out, you are impeccably dressed, as you always are. You have a fitted suit. Uh, you have a nice tie, pocket square. Of po course. Of course, pocket square. Yes. Now, I am told, actually, that your iconic look is partially yours, but also partially came to you via a woman you worked with on the Smurfs movie? Yes, Rita Ryak. Yes, the, the costumer for the Smurfs. I, I have to tell you, I was... Very confident about how I, I was presenting myself to the world, and I called Rita uh, in preparation for wardrobe, and she said, I wouldn't dream of telling you how to dress, you're Tim Gunn, just bring whatever you have. So I did, and I got home after the first day of filming, and she said, I just looked at today's rushes, and your clothes are not good enough. That's bold. She said that to you. Well, and I was devastated. I felt humiliated and as though I'd let the whole production down. And she said, you will I'm going shopping tomorrow. You will meet me at a tailor on West 54th Street. I go to the tailor. She pushes me into the dressing room. And I start looking at the labels of things. And I see a shirt that's $450 and a suit that's $4,000 and a tie that's $250. And I shriek at her, I cannot wear these things. I'm not going to do it. My wardrobe will just have to do. She said, You're, you put them on. <laughs> so I was obedient. But the last straw for me was the pocket square. Because I have to tell you, I've been a fan of pocket squares forever. But I could never do it. I would experiment. I'd put my jacket out on my bed. <laughs> I'd flatten it out. I'd stick the pocket square in. I'd think, oh, it looks all right. Then I'd put the jacket on, look in a mirror, and say, you look like an ass. <laughs> so I said that to Rita. You've pushed all my buttons. You've taken me this far. I'm not doing that. She said, you're going to do it. So now I'm addicted to all this pattern mixing and the pocket squares, and I owe it all to Rita. Wow, okay. Yeah. So when you put the pocket square in now and you look, you were the same person. It is the same pocket square, but you see a different person well, in that mirror. Well, I may still look like an ass, but I'm a confident <laughs> ass. I own, I own it, I have to say. I, I am what I am. Yeah. <laughs> I see you uh, as someone who's always worn suits, but I understand that that is not exactly the case. However, I am surprised to learn that recently you bought your very first pair of sweatpants. I did indeed. <laughs> and I have a very special person to thank for that. Olympic fencer, three-time Olympian, and, and silver medalist Tim Morehouse. He is my fencing coach. And he said, you need a pair of sweatpants. You cannot come to my fencing club dressed like this. You need to have freedom and agility. You need to have ease of movement. And I have to tell you, I get a real kick out of those sweatpants. And so this is a new thing, fencing for you. It's a whole new thing that began a year ago yesterday. I'm thrilled to say. Wow. Yeah. Though a five-month hiatus during the taping of two seasons of Project Runway. Sure. Because we tape all day, every day. But I'm back in the saddle now. Now you had to take time off to work on Project Runway, which is in its 15th I know. season. Hard to believe. So, you know, you were saying to me backstage, season one, you had no idea Ugh. it would even go to season two. Never dreamed it would go to season two. Never in a million years. So what do you think it is that has made it last to season 15? Well, people love the creative act. They love the fact that these are individuals who have a passion, who have a fire within them, who are talented, um, have a vision. And we watch that vision go from the ether to something concrete. And it's quite thrilling to watch. And I have to say, as the mentor, I'm in awe of them. Yeah. I'm in absolute awe 
I could never dream of doing it. Of course, I can't tell you the number of times I want to shout at the judges, you try it. You get in that workroom. You're being so critical about, oh, the, the hem's a little off. Really? Ten hours, everyone. Right. I mean, t- t- ten hours to conceive, to shop, to um, drape, to, to pattern make, to fit, to style. Ten hours. We don't fake it. It's real. Everyone knows this from watching the show, and this is part of the reason we all fall in love with you, because you manage to give critiques that are constructive, but you're also honest, but not in a way that's mean. One of my favorite things that you say is, uh, you know, that's a whole lot of look. You know, when someone's (laughs) just like, whoa, too many things. But that is a very nice way of saying, what is going on? You're crazy. uh, uh, Ophira, I have to say, I, I learned quickly as a teacher that if you are perceived to be mean-spirited, unkind, caustic in any way, your students shut down yeah. and, and they discredit you. So I want the doors to be open. I want us to have a good, healthy relationship and, and one that is based on truth-telling and candor. I employ a lot of empathy when I'm uh, critiquing because I think, how would I feel if someone were to say those words to me with that intonation? I'm here to provide some feedback and to help you step away from your work for just a little bit and look at it critically and objectively as you can. What I try to do is I pummel the designers with questions because I want to get them to the point where they declare to me exactly what I'm seeing without my saying to them, this is what I see, because that's joyful for me. Good, you see it. It's like therapy. (laughs) What is like therapy? I call myself a fashion therapist (laughs) for just that reason. Yeah, they're like, oh yeah, it is a whole lot of luck. (laughs) (laughs) So you have uh, Project Runway, and now you have Project Runway Junior. Yes. So we have uh, the kids competing are under eighteen. Is that correct? They're they're thirteen to seventeen. Thirteen to seventeen. So with Project Runway Junior, uh, how, what has changed about the show to accommodate you know, the, the younger juniors? I'll be honest, nothing. Really? The only thing that has changed um, is the length of our workday because of the child labor laws. Thank God for those child labor laws. I'm telling you, getting home at 9 o'clock at night for me is such a reward. So we actually play the workday. We have to play that as two days. But other than that, no, it's the same. I mean, the first day in the workroom with with the designers, I will be honest, I was very trepidatious. I was walking around on eggshells thinking, oh, I don't know how much I can really say and how far I can go. But within five minutes, pow, it hit me. They want it all. They know when you're pandering. And they're much more mature about it than the regular uh, Project (laughs) Runway designers. They, they accept responsibility for their work. They are supportive of each other. Oh. They're a joy. If I had to choose between the two shows, I'd take Junior in a heartbeat. Wow. That says something. I want to throw out, just for fun, some fashion trends. Oh. And I just want to get your gut reaction. Oh, well, all okay. right. What do you think about activity tracking jewelry, like Fitbits and Apple Watches? And I find them to be gimmicky and trying too hard. If the wearer benefits from them... Fantastic. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to do it. (laughs) (laughs) How about pockets or flies that don't work? Well, I'll say whatever works for you. But I don't think that a faux fly zip on a woman's pant is particularly flattering. (laughs) And I think a man's pant without it is really peculiar. (laughs) How do you feel about the drop crotch hammer pants? Unless you're packing a Depends, don't do it. (laughs) Tim Gunn, are you ready for your Ask Me Another Challenge? All right. Okay, very good. Tim Gunn, everybody. Oh, Jonathan's coming out. Let's welcome Jonathan Cody back to the stage. Tim Gunn, you are an inspiration for this game. And because we love your famous catchphrase, make it work. Make it work. Uh, was that something that you've said forever and forever, ever? Forever, as a teacher. It's, yeah. it's very useful. Do your students say it back to you and perhaps like well, embroider the, it on a pillow? Or? No, they would begin to say, don't tell me to make it work again. 
Well, I am going to. <laughs> it's very important. And that is a response usually because people are like, no, it can't happen. Is that or the sort? they just want to, especially in, a, in, a, in classes where, where students make things, they just want to abandon it if it's not going well. And I, and I always say, look, sit down, study it, offer up a diagnosis of what's wrong and a prescription for how to make it work because if you just abandon everything that presents a huge problem to you then what do you really learn from it nothing yeah and you just are starting from scratch yeah, over, over and over and over and over, and over again it's groundhog day <laughs> <laughs> so in this game uh, we took that phrase but every answer is going to be a word that rhymes with work oh it's gonna be easy if you need hints feel free to call on our puzzle guru art chung Art, the Nina Garcia. <laughs> Nina Garcia. <laughs> Ask me another. I All wish. Right. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. <laughs> if you get enough right, Matthew Griffin from Stony Creek, Ontario, Canada will win an Ask oh. Me Another Rubik's Cube. Oh, good. I'm planning on moving to Canada. I need to make friends there. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So here we go. Tim. I've got this troop of French Canadian clowns, and we want to call ourselves something, something du soleil. What do you think it should be? Make it Cirque. That's correct, yeah. <laughs> now, wouldn't it be great if everyone came up to you with that question? Tim, I've got this group of French Canadian clowns. Given the way things are today, I'd be grateful. <laughs> I'll join them. Tim, I want to perform a popular dance where I shake my butt. Make it twerk. Yeah. <laughs> Listening audience, there are no words for me to describe what just <laughs> happened. I just shimmied. <laughs> Tim, I'm trying to remember the name of the Star Trek captain played by Ooh. William Shatner. Make it Kirk. Oh, yes. Tim, I'm trying to make some delicious Jamaican chicken rubbed with hot spices. Jonathan, make a jerk. I was hoping we were going to use jerk for something else. I guess we already have. I'm going to make that my ringtone, by the way. This is your last clue. Oh. Tim, I'm trying to remember the actress who played Suzanne Sugarbaker on Designing Women. Make it Delta Burke. Yeah. Ophira, did you think I wouldn't get a designing woman I, you question? Know, I know. <laughs> Easy peasy. You got well, them all it, it's right. the company and, no. this, and the supportive environment. Thank no, you, everyone. No, you yeah. So, congratulations, Tim. You and Matthew Griffin from Ontario, Canada have oh. won Ask Me Another Rubik's Cubes. Wonderful. Yes, thank Thrilling. you so much. One more hand for Project uh, Runway Fashion Girl, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. Now it's time to crown our big winner. Let's bring back our finalist, Rohan Pita Party, who thinks he's on Jeopardy. <laughs> And Katie Brookoff, who responded to a Craigslist post and ended up living with a member of an in-costume monster metal band. <laughs> Puzziger Archung, take it away. Thanks, Ophira. Katie and Rohan, your final round is called Dash to Victory. Every answer contains at least two hyphens in it. So if I said, it's French for a two-person meeting where you put your heads together, that would be tete a tete. We're going to play this like a penalty shootout. You'll each get up to eight questions. The contestant who scores the most points will be our big winner. Your prize will be an Ask Me Another Ruby's Cube signed by Tim Gunn and a Project Runway hat and shirt. We flipped a coin backstage, and Katie is going first. Here we go. Katie, it's 50% milk, 50% light cream. Half and half. That is right. Rohan, it's a term that describes a boxing match or other program you might watch and pay extra for on TV. Pay-per-view. That is correct. Katie, it's an activity where you create a picture by coloring spaces indicated by digits. Uh, color by number? Yeah, we'll take that. Paint by number or color by numbers. Rohan, it's a hip-hop group with hits like What a Man and Push It. Kid and Play? No, oh, I'm sorry. Salt. We were looking for salt and pepper. Yeah. Ugh. Katie, it's the furniture maker who trademarked the term recline away. Lazy Boy? That is correct. Rohan, it's Donald Trump's relation to Jared Kushner. Father-in-law. That is right. Katie, 
The floral symbol that appears three times on New Orleans' official city flag. Fleur de lis. That is right. Rohan, the carousel work company of Mansfield, Ohio, is one of the last remaining manufacturers of this classic ride. Tilt a whirl? No, I'm sorry, we're looking for a merry go round. Oh, does that have hyphens? Oh, man. <laughs> Two of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At the halfway point, the score is Katie has four, Rohan has two. Katie, a top job at a newspaper, the person in charge of the people who assign stories to reporters. Editor in chief. That is correct. <laughs> Rohan, do you remember the state flower of Alaska? No. <laughs> Technically, that's correct. No, no, no. No. For the ashes. no, no, no. I'm you sorry. We finished. We were yeah. looking for Forget Me Not. Oh. Oh, that. Uh. <laughs> sorry. So, Katie, if you get this question right, you're our grand winner. Ugh. Okay. The Girl Scout cookie flavor that's also called Peanut Butter Sandwich. I know every other Girl Scout cookie flavor. <laughs> Nutter Butter? No, I'm sorry. We're looking for do si Oh. All right, Rohan, you need this question right to stay in the game. Oh, God. It's an almond toffee candy with a bumblebee on the wrapper. Three seconds. Almond toffee bumblebee. A Swiss, I believe. That's three Swiss hyphens. Made. That's three hyphens. Oh, God. That was a brilliant guess, but I'm sorry. The correct answer was Biddle Honey, which means Katie. Oh. Congratulations. Oh, God. Uh, you guys are amazing and also so entertaining. Thank you, Rohan. Congratulations, Katie. You're our big winner, and that's our show. Ask Me Another's puzzle guru is Art Chung. Hey, my name anagrams to Narc Thug. Our house musician is Jonathan Colton. Now, Jolta Cannon. Our puzzles were written by Sean Kennedy, Mike Knocknagel, Scott Ross, and senior writers Kyle Beakley and Karen Lurie. Ask Me Another is produced by Mike Katzeff, Travis Larchuk, Julia Melfi, Denny Shin, Ramel Wood, and our intern, Camila Salazar. Asia Lamazar. Along with Steve Nelson and Anya Grudman. We are recorded by Damon Whittemore, Richie Clark, and Nate Kinsella. Ask Me Another was created by Eric Newsom and Jesse Baker. We'd like to thank our home in Brooklyn, New York, The Bell House. Hot Heel Blues. And our production partner, WNYC. I'm Haripe Begonias. Ophira Eisenberg. And this was Ask Me Another from NPR. Now, I know if you made it to this point in the podcast, you are a fan of our show. Thank you so much. So... Why don't you do us a favor and rate us on iTunes? Or better yet, leave us a review. Your support helps other people find our podcast. Thank you. When you're ready to take a break or just looking for something new, you should check out the array of NPR podcasts on the NPR One app. Or you can visit npr.org slash podcasts. There's revealing interviews on Fresh Air, The Big Listen, and Bullseye, new music on Alt Latino, All Songs, and insights and analysis on Code Switch, Politics, and Latino USA. Find your new favorite thing on your time and it's just a click away on npr.org slash podcasts. Podcasts and on the NPR One app. Next time on Ask Me Another, Leslie Odom Jr., who plays Aaron Burr in the Broadway hit Hamilton, tells us what it's like to star opposite Lin Manuel Miranda. He's just, he's a koala bear. He's just the best. <laughs> you know, I, I really do feel bad about killing him every night. I really <laughs> Join me, Ophira Eisenberg, on NPR's Hour of Puzzles, Word Games, and 